take extra precautions and lock the doors tonight. Uh, if you live in this area, it would not be a bad idea to leave all the lights on on your house. An alleged sexual predator from Las Vegas has the city of New Orleans on lockdown tonight as a massive manhunt gets underway. This is News 3 at 5 with Jim Snyder and Nina Raditich. Good evening, everyone. Police in New Orleans came face to face with this guy, but he slipped through their fingers. And now they've launched a manhunt for Mog Four Men Sewer. Metro wants him in connection with a sexual assault on a teenager last month near Boulder Highway. New Orleans police want him for a lot more than that. Dana Wagner has been following the story and Dana, where do they think Mansoor is now? Nina, they're not sure. He could be in New Orleans still. He could be back here in Las Vegas. He could be anywhere, but the fact remains police had him and he got away. New Orleans police say Mike Four Mansoor was at the airport wearing a wig when police thought he looked suspicious, approached him and asked for ID. One of our detectives confronted this particular male uh, at the ticket counter and he asked for some identification. He refused the identification. He struck the officer and ran off. He ran to the parking garage where police say he carjacked a red pickup and sped off, leading police on a high-speed chase. He hit and killed a road worker, then took off into the woods on foot. Police searched for him using helicopters, spotlights, and infrared. Take extra precautions and lock the doors tonight. Uh, if you live in this area, it would not be a bad idea to leave all the lights on on your house. Police say Mansoor left a fake passport at the airport with the alias of Ahmed Reza Rahimi. He also left something in the stolen truck. There is a black wig, and I think one of the things that that led to the suspicious person was was the obvious wig to, that that he had on. New Orleans police still haven't found Mansoor. In fact, just a short time ago, they called off the manhunt. Mansoor has apparently slipped through their fingers again. Nina? And Dana, the search isn't over here, though. We talked to Lieutenant Tom Monahan at Metro. He says they're in contact with the New Orleans Police Department, and they're working together to find Mansoor. One man, two shootings. Tonight, police in two California cities, or people there rather, are in shock after a gunman went on a rampage. One of the shootings happened in Nevada City. The other was in Grass Valley. That's just north of Sacramento. Police say for some unknown reason, the man walked into a social services building in Nevada City and shot three people this afternoon. Then he drove to a restaurant in Grass Valley and fired at two more people, killing one of them. That gunman is still on the run. Police are asking people who live in those two cities to be extra careful tonight until they find the suspect. The same jury that convicted a man of killing two non-racist skinheads has now decided that John Butler should pay the ultimate price for his crime. Impose a sentence of death dated at Las Vegas, Nevada, this 10th day of January, 2001. Jurors decided today Butler Verdict should be put to death on both counts of murder. Butler was found guilty of killing 20-year-old Daniel Shursty and 25-year-old Lynn Newborn. Friends say the two men were skinheads working against racism. Butler will die by lethal injection. A Michigan woman who spent New Year's in Las Vegas is missing now after taking a dose of the date rape drug Rohypnol. Police say Shonda Robbins drank a cocktail with a dose of the drug here in Las Vegas and was treated at a local hospital. After she was released, she returned home to Michigan and then mysteriously disappeared. Police say they caught Robbins on some surveillance video at the Michigan airport just a few days ago, but they are not sure where she's headed now. He is one of the most wanted heroin smugglers in the world, and tonight he's behind bars. The U.S. government put out a $2 million reward for Lao Thai's capture. After an extensive overseas search, he was finally arrested in Bangkok, Thailand. Thai was an account accountant for the United Shan Army. That's an ethnic independence group that fights for freedom and is known to sell drugs around the world. U.S. officials say they're now going after the leader of that army, who's also a big name in the drug world. This is a heartbreaker. A school bus driver's worst nightmare came true when he accidentally ran over a kindergartner. It happened in Columbia County, Georgia. Police say the 22-year-old bus driver just didn't see 5-year-old Alina Johnson as she walked around the front of the bus. Friend says Alina tripped over her shoestring, and while she was trying to get up, the bus driver pulled off and ran over her. The bus driver passed a mandatory drug test and has been given time off for counseling now, but won't face any charges. 
Vandals target a slew of mailboxes, uh, local mailboxes that is, putting dozens of Valley homeowners in a jam. And now those homeowners are pointing the finger at the post office for not taking care of business. Stacey Escalante is live near Ann Road in Fort Apache in that neighborhood where the crimes took place. And Stacey, for weeks those folks have been driving to the post office to pick up their mail. That's right, Nina. You can't exactly walk to the nearest post office. It's more like you have to pack a lunch. Take a look around. There's not a lot out here. In fact, we're past the base of Lone Mountain. They're still in Clark County, though, so they get their mail delivered, but not for the past month. Well, residents squeaked loud enough finally today, and the post office finally heard them. What's your typical trip to the mailbox? Probably a dozen steps, maybe a little more. Okay, great. Thanks so much. But for Lita Russo, the trip involves at least a dozen stop signs. Come here, anybody. Her mailbox sits eight miles away at the Red Rock Vista Post Office. But the line's usually halfway down the thing, so I come in, turn around, and leave again. For the last month, Russo and about 50 of her neighbors have had to travel a total of 16 miles to pick up their mail in person. We just walk up, hand them our license, don't even have to say anything. They're like, oh, okay, Ann Road, I know. Street delivery stopped on December 13th after a slew of Van Road mailboxes were vandalized. Residents reported the crime to the postal inspector. With a promise every week because I ask, when will the new boxes be in? Next week. That's been going on for a month. I was very patient at first. I understand there's, you know, they're doing whatever they can. But after a month, and we got 10 different stories, and still no straight answer, and still no boxes. Until today. I mean, it seems like no action was taken until everybody started yelling and screaming well, around here. Well, actually, you know, that's... I mean, you get you know, phone calls and that, all of a sudden everybody's calling down here, and now we're getting action. You know, in actuality... And you sat there for three weeks and nothing was going on. Post office workers showed up in person with a peace offering. But we take definitely take some responsibility for not keeping you folks really up to, up, up to date. They put in new boxes, ripped out the old ones, and say delivery will be back to normal by Friday. And do I think that the squeaking wheel gets the attention? Yes. I think had it not been for you people being notified, uh, it would have been even longer. The post office claims the media t attention had nothing to do with it. They say they scrambled to put these boxes up because of the local manager. They say the problem stemmed from these boxes not being delivered in time. In fact, these aren't the actual ones. They were able to get these from other parts of the state. They do admit they should have communicated better with the residents. By the way, the vandals have not been caught. Reporting live, I'm Stacy Escalante. Back to you, Nina. Glad to see something was done, though, Stacy. Thank you. A reminder that tampering with mail is a felony punishable by jail terms and or fines. Last year, about 50 people were arrested for that crime in the Las Vegas area. If you wear contact lenses, you may have been paying too much for them, but now you could get some money back. A settlement in a big lawsuit affects anyone who bought certain brands of contacts since 1988. The lawsuit alleged that manufacturers charged people too much and kept the prices high by keeping lenses away from discount suppliers. Most of the major brands are included in this settlement, and it's pretty easy to find out if you can register for the benefits. Just log on to our website and click on links seen on News 3. Two commercial airlines are becoming one of the largest airlines in the country. Today, American Airlines agreed to buy out TWA in a $2 billion deal. Given federal approval, the deal would bring an end to financially troubled Transworld Airlines. That airline has filed for bankruptcy three times in the last 10 years. An airline spokesman says most of the employees with TWA will be given jobs at American. American flies 24 daily flights out of McCarran. TWA has just five. At one point, air rage seemed like an epidemic in this country, but now the FAA says airlines are getting a handle on the problem. Last year, commercial airlines conducted only 266 investigations stemming from troubles with passengers in the sky. That's down 44 cases since the peak in 1999 and down 16 cases since 1998. Flight attendants special incentives, including free drink coupons or upgrading seats, go a long way to calm down angry passengers. If you've ever flown across the country or even overseas, you know it's uncomfortable. But could it actually kill you? At least 800 people nationwide have signed on to a class action lawsuit claiming their family members died from blood clots caused by long flights. It's a health condition known as deep vein thrombosis. And when you sit for long periods of time in a confined space, blood pools in your legs, sometimes causing a clot. 
Medical experts say they've been pushing airlines for many years to post warnings inside planes about this condition. It may take a lawsuit like this one to get all the airlines to do that. British Airways says starting this Tuesday, they'll give all passengers written warnings about the problem. Qantas and Ansat Airlines also have plans to post warnings in their jets. Doctors do recommend if you're on a long flight that you stand up and that you do some stretching. And the short walks to and from the restroom may actually benefit you more than you think. A former U.S. president is being immortalized in bronze. President Clinton dedicated a life-size statue of wartime President Franklin D. Roosevelt today. It is the first statue ever to show a world leader in a wheelchair. FDR was a victim of polio, which put him in a wheelchair for more than two decades, but the press back then kept the wheelchair out of their photos. The FDR memorial is located in a park between the Lincoln and the Jefferson memorials. We're pretty used to seeing road work around this town, construction yeah. all the time. Tom Hawley talking about some on Western and Oki. Yeah, and a lot of people use Western as an alternate route to the heavy rush hour traffic on I-15. Not today, folks. Look at this line of cars here. Northbound on Western, backed up from Oki, about halfway to Sahara. Only one direction of traffic is going through at a time. Why? Well, there is a flagger on scene and some trenching is taking place. Part of the uh, ongoing flood control measures taking place in this general area. How deep is this trench? Well, you can see a guy there on the left side of the screen who is inside the trench and uh, he's just barely popping out. Actually, he did just pop out of the uh, trench, not in there anymore, but it looks like it's about four and a half, five feet deep. Obviously, a lot of work to be done here. And again, only one direction at a time going through. You probably want to stay away from Western and Oki if you can. Tom Olley reporting from Sky 3. All right, Tom, Big Ben may soon stand at the foot of the strip if some developers have their way. Yeah, plans for three new mega resorts are coming together. Uh, how are you going to get it funded? There's always, always, always money for a deal if it's a good project. A vacant piece of land may soon turn into an international landmark. We'll show you where new gambling hubs may one day stand and what type of transportation you'll be able to take to get there. Plus, why more may not necessarily be better when it comes to taking vitamin supplements. And they were the hottest toys of Christmas 2000, but doctors say they're also the cause of thousands of accidents and injuries. How to keep your kids safe on their scooters, coming up next on News 3 at 5, where news comes first. You're watching Southern Nevada's number one choice for news. This is News 3 at 5. What's on the south end of the Strip may be getting some new neighbors. The plan is to use all of this vacant land, the dark spot you see in this live picture from Sky 3, for three new mega resorts with an international theme. We first told you about the plans for the new resort hub last week. A partnership called New World LLC is planning to build the major casino project. And as Kurt Goff reports now, those 77 acres are considered by many to be the last prime real estate available along the Strip. Let's give you perspective. This is the 77 acres along Las Vegas Boulevard. These are artist renderings of what may, I emphasize, may be sitting on the prime real estate. A world port resort complex that would include possibly a London theme. And I really feel this project is the catalyst to the next wave. The same, the same area. Those investing heavily in the project are hoping to create such a buzz about this whole thing that more partners will want to get involved and contribute money. The question is, will that be tough to get these people interested considering the perception that Las Vegas may be at capacity in terms of growth? I've been very close to Las Vegas. I've seen it grow. I've seen the naysayers. I've seen all kinds of issues come up. Is this the end? Of course not. Uh, how are you going to get it funded? There's always, always, always money for a deal if it's a good project. Another part of the plan, to extend monorail service farther south. Our goal is to try to move that monorail system further south to our property and create a hub that will service all three of our major hotel casino partners. The airport is so close, the buildings will only be able to be about 427 feet high. Roughly, that's the height of the New York, New York right down the street. And as far as some of the old buildings are concerned, many have been torn down. The land is being cleared, the slate wiped clean. At this point, New World is hoping confidence will be contagious. Kurt Goff, News 3. And as far as a timetable as to when this project might become a reality, New World will only say they hope to keep the momentum going. 